There was nobody there. Nobody human, at least. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? From creepy humanoids to evil creatures, this next volume is all about those unsettling things that are just not quite human. Our first chapter is about one of my greatest fears, a possessed doll. Ever since I was a little girl, I have absolutely hated anything that looks even the slightest bit lifelike. Puppets, animatronics, and especially dolls. There's just something incredibly disturbing about looking into the eyes of something that is so close to being human. Movies like Child's Play and Dolls only made my paranoia worse, and with more recent movies like The Conjuring and Annabelle, it's clear that many people still find dolls to be horrifying. In this chapter, I'll be telling you the true story behind a very famous doll. In 1970, a young woman named Donna was turning 28, and for her birthday, her mother gave her a seemingly harmless Raggedy Ann doll that she purchased from a secondhand store. Both Donna and her roommate Angie were nurses, and so they were out of the house most of the time, leaving the doll in the apartment alone. They didn't think much of their new roommate until strange things started happening. One night, after a long shift, Donna came home to find the doll sitting on her bed in her closed bedroom, which would have been perfectly fine if that's where Donna had left her. Other nights, Donna would find the doll sitting on the couch with her legs crossed and arms folded, or standing upright in the kitchen. Both Donna and Angie were rational young women and believed there had to be a reasonable explanation for this. Maybe they were just remembering things wrong. But Lou, Angie's fiance, thought otherwise. He did not trust that doll one bit and wanted them to get rid of it, or at least consult a medium to see if there truly was something inside it. But Donna and Angie didn't believe that was possible, so they carried on as usual. Then, they began finding handwritten notes around the house. They were written in pencil, in childlike handwriting, on pieces of parchment, a type of paper that no one in the house owned. They read, Help us. One night, Donna came home and found a mysterious red liquid on the doll's hands and chest. It looks like blood, but it was coming from the doll itself. That was the push that Donna and Angie needed to come to terms with the fact that there was something wrong with this doll. They brought in a medium and performed a seance. A long time ago, the medium said, before this apartment complex was built, there was a field on this property. And it was here that the body of seven-year-old Annabelle Higgins was found. And it is in this doll that her spirit now lives. She trusts you and just wants to be around you. Donna and Angie felt sorry for Annabelle and decided to let her stay in the apartment with them. Lou was not happy about that. One night, it was just Lou and Angie in the apartment, packing up for a road trip they were leaving on in the morning. Lou was walking to the kitchen and past Donna's room and heard shuffling coming from inside. Donna wasn't home, so who could it be? Lou threw the door open. There was nobody there. Nobody human, at least. He walked inside and saw Annabelle, sitting in the corner of the room. As he walked towards her, he got the burning feeling as though someone were standing behind him. He whipped around to find nobody. He turned back to Annabelle and felt burning again, but this time on his chest. He lifted his shirt to find seven distinct scratch marks singed into his skin. The following morning, they called a priest, who then called Ed and Lorraine Warren, renowned demonologists. This doll is not possessed, Lorraine told Donna. Demons only possess humans. This entity was using this doll to manipulate you, moving it around the house so you would pay attention to it, then tricking a medium into telling you that it was the spirit of a harmless young girl. So, what does it want? Your soul. A priest performed an exorcism on the apartment and the Warrens took Annabelle home with them in a bag. Knowing what this entity was capable of, they made sure to avoid the highways on their way home, since Annabelle would no doubt try to sabotage their drive. And they were right. Along the way, the car's engine continuously stalled. So, is Annabelle truly dangerous? Or is all of this an elaborate hoax? If you're the type who needs to see to believe, you can actually visit Annabelle at the Occult Museum, a section of the Warren's Connecticut home where they store haunted relics collected from the many cases they worked on. 
she's kept locked in a box with multiple warnings. One skeptical visitor made the fatal mistake of mocking the doll, tapping her glass case and daring her to do her worst on him. When he left for home, he got into a terrible motorcycle accident and died three hours later. Whether or not the Warrens created that story as a cautionary tale, would you really want to test it? What do you think about the story of Annabelle? Do you think an inanimate object could really be evil? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if it gave you the chills, and don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and our new gaming channel, Slatrix. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.